It's just been wild how far we've gone in such a short amount of time. How many times do you get to say that you've done the first thing in history? Our mission here at VARDA is to manufacture things in orbit that will help people here on Earth. The potential for better drugs, new drugs made in microgravity, could have a real impact on people's lives here on Earth. The idea to launch a spacecraft into orbit, produce life-changing drugs, and land it on U.S. soil is unprecedented. It took three years to design and build the spacecraft, to create the technology and launch it into space. The big question was, will it work? VARDA is unique in its approach to developing pharmaceuticals in orbit. We had to start from scratch and build up a pharmaceutical crystallization payload uh, in our first mission. Three years of uh, a lot of work, three years of a lot of energy spent on this vehicle, and I felt like a little piece of my DNA was in this capsule. It was a huge deal for VARDA to be able to build and formulate a spacecraft such that our manufacturing capsule is able to go to space and then come back home. It was the first time our spacecraft was, was going to orbit, so that was still a very tense time. You could just see the rocket going up into the sky and it was truly extraordinary. Human beings have come to this point where we can launch these massive vehicles and things just work. So for us to develop this payload in three years was a pretty phenomenal achievement in engineering. It's like the excitement, but also the nerves of finally watching something that you worked on for so long do the thing that it's supposed to do. When we go up on the SpaceX rocket, first the spacecraft has to separate from the rocket. So there's a separation mechanism that we use. And then the spacecraft deploys its solar arrays, begins generating power, turns on its computing systems. Then we go through a commissioning phase where we basically check onboard systems. Once the capsule was in a stable state, we then sent the commands to begin the manufacturing process. We were able to access the telemetry showing us what temperature all the various components were at. So you could see that it was either you know, correctly executing the melt, had correctly cooled to the growth temperature, and then ultimately correctly cooled down to the final temperature where it actually holds the crystals that we grew. The entire reentry process is a, a very delicate dance between us here at VARDA, as well as with Rocket Lab, with the FAA, as well as with UTTR, which is our landing site partners. The whole process of reentering a space capsule is actually a multi-day event. It starts a couple days before it even touches the atmosphere. And when the last burn happens, um, that's it, you're, you're coming back home. Once we're uh, on that route, then it's really checking our systems, making sure that we're able to separate from the Rocket Lab photon bus successfully. During re-entry, that was also really exciting because we effectively had a 20-minute blackout. So even though it only takes two minutes to uh, fly through atmosphere and survive the hot gases, the way we re-enter, we actually have to first do a burn, coast with that, uh, with that burn while still attached to that bus, separate from the bus, and still continue to coast until we hit the upper atmosphere. And while we're coasting, we can't really communicate with the capsule. The capsule effectively stabilizes itself and will come back through the atmosphere at one point seeing what we call peak heating. So it's very hot, it's very, very fast. The reentry capsule comes back, screaming through the atmosphere, Mach 25. And that's where we have these beautiful videos of us heating up and you can see the glow of this plasma around our vehicle that's hotter than the surface of the sun. And you see the shedding of the heat shield and releasing that heat so that the heat dissipates and we don't burn up the super important pharmaceutical payloads inside. I was definitely worried, is it gonna survive that force? Is it gonna survive the heat? We had a decent idea of that it would uh, survive the heat based on our excellent team of thermal scientists who did all the great calculations for that. We have a known trajectory uh, that we can drive from data as we're coming back, so we have an idea of where it's going. The first uh, bit of telemetry was basically the indication that the vehicle had survived.
feeling of walking up to these helicopters and we're in our recovery gear, we've got our GoPros on, our backpacks are strapped, and it kind of felt like we were elite science commandos going on this you know, massive recon mission. So we kind of get up in the helicopters and we take off, go find the capsule, and we're trying to ping it, trying to see if you know, people have data on where that landed. Can people see parachutes? We're looking out of the windows. And I remember I was sitting in the helicopter just trying to listen in to the networks, and all of a sudden, I, the phone just starts to vibrate. I start getting these messages in, but eventually it's, it's giving me like real latitude and longitude coordinates. So at that point, I'm like, okay, hey, the thing's alive. This is, this is great. <laughs> we're getting some data back, uh, and we were pretty confident that it was coming in. We just didn't know where it was gonna land. There's a parachute that deploys several thousand feet above the ground. Just before he hit the ground, one of the guys in the helicopter looks like way off in the distance, quite low. It's like, oh, there it is. Just touched down gently in the Utah desert. When I got out of the helicopter and I actually saw the capsule on the ground, I, it kind of took me aback a bit. Just like stare at this thing that just came from outer space and it survived. And then your autopilot kicks in and you're like, okay, it's here, it's back. We have stuff to do. We've got to verify that the thing we sent it up there for actually did what it was supposed to do. And then they rig it up to a, a huge uh, gantry rigging system and lift it off with a helicopter and, and then they're just flying back with this capsule. And then the first helicopter came in and landed. There's just so much excitement. So you're there, you're taking apart the vehicle and removing the payload and getting it ready for shipment. We opened up the vehicle and for some reason I thought it would just look different because it's been in space. And really the only thing that looked different was the outside, which looked like a toasted marshmallow. So <laughs> felt like I just put it together the day before. I think the coolest part is that we're able to generate positive impact both to people living on Earth who have health issues and could benefit from the pharmaceuticals that we're now beginning to grow. But also at the same time, we're able to support the nation through hypersonic testing and be able to develop defense systems for our nation as a whole. So we're both able to protect the nation and help the people all over the world. We showed that we're not only able to crystallize something in space, but we can make sure it's the exact form when it gets back down to Earth. 